Alien Romulus has more references than Deadpool and Wolverine. Wow, that sounds like a bunch of clickbait bullshit, but we'll get to that. This is gonna be a simpler, more off-the-cuff video than the usual ones because I want to get Salo still relevant. Chapter one, would I recommend it? On the whole, I'd say yes. I've seen it twice now because I had to leave to get an icy and when I came back, I'd missed all kinds of shit. When I watched it the first time, I thought it was terrible. And then when I saw it a second time, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Which, I think this is a problem with rewatching movies. Rewatching movies is sort of a double-edged sword. I wanna say it's the most fair way to critique a movie because you go into it with no false expectations. Your expectations are exactly equal to what you're going to get. So you can't be disappointed. But at the same time, I feel like we forgive a lot of the flaws of movies when we rewatch them because of that fact. And those flaws don't go away, we just pay less attention to them. So it's a little tricky. I, I usually don't watch movies twice in such quick succession, but I do think you should watch it whether you're a fan of the Alien series or not. Because if you are a fan, I mean, you're just gonna wanna see it and see what it's all about. If you're not a fan, I think you might actually enjoy it more because a lot of the problems that I have relate to it being a piece of this larger series. But if you're not concerned with the spectacle of the movie theater, then honestly, I think you could wait for streaming. I think comedies and horror movies are the best movies to experience in the theater, but it's really not that scary. Although that's coming from me, and ever since the ball pit era, there's really nothing that can make me feel anymore. <laughs> What did I like about it? The two main leads uh, definitely grew on me uh, watching it a second time. I think that the movie looks great. Uh, the CGI looks okay. The, the sets and the props all look amazing. I think that they're really well matched with the aesthetic of Alien. The way that they made everything look so dirty and used and the lighting complements it. Really well done there. They really play up the practical effects quite a bit. Uh, especially like, you know, the, the weapons and things, and, and there is a practical xenomorph, practical face huggers, but as usual, they're almost always entirely glopped over with CGI, but there still are the occasional scenes where you can tell that it's real. Not to get into the negative before we're even in the negative chapter, but I think that every studio exec has a little creature living in their ass that bites them anytime they see practical effects. It's an obsession and a compulsion. They can't help themselves. Everything has to eventually be, quotes, enhanced with CGI because it's not, quotes, realistic enough. Even though I can instantly spot CGI and there are practical effects that are decades old that still hold up. So anyway, spoilers from now on. What's the problem? There's problems with the story, with the characters, with needless references to the originals, but all of this I think can pretty much be wrapped up in one big umbrella problem, which is that the movie lacks any semblance of subtlety. In the original, we had a small cast of characters and a very simple premise, and all of the characters were extremely realistic and grounded from the beginning, and we have a very slow burn that builds up to the excitement. Here, they are thrusting excitement at us from the very beginning. For example, Bjorn doesn't like Andy because as Kay just says at us, Bjorn has a tragic history with androids. Which one is Bjorn, you might be asking, even if you've seen the movie? Well, that is kind of my point. All of this stuff is fine, it's just that it is thrown at us way before we have a chance to care about any of them. Not to mention the fact that Bjorn's prejudice against Andy is completely dropped before it has a chance to be significant in any way. And speaking of the subtlety problem, the setting, you know, it's this massive sci-fi planet and it's just like, you know, you compare this with this and there's a reason that the original is so successful, is because we have a chance to feel like something here is real, like this is a real scenario, because it's just people sitting around on a ship. Other than the fact that it's a spaceship, it's completely believable and relatable, but here, it's so far removed from anything we can relate with. And obviously, this isn't the same movie as Alien. They're asking for comparison, of course. But you know what? Let's just give them the old B of the D. Let's just say, you know, the scale of this movie is not the same as the original. But the characters themselves lack subtlety as well. And as far as the action and the thrills, I think it's just 
We can only really process so much. The first 20 minutes of the movie has more spectacle than all of Alien combined. So by the time we even see the Alien, we've already been exposed to so much stimulation that it doesn't really feel like much, to me anyway. But this brings us to the biggest lack of subtlety in this movie, which is the references. Okay, call me naive, but I kind of thought we were over this crap. I mean, seriously, you're bringing Ian Holm back after he's passed away to be this horrible looking recreation of Ash in the form of a different android named Rook. It is the worst thing I've ever seen. It, it's. It is worse than Luke from season two of The Mandalorian. It is, his expressions just do not work right. His eyeline is never right. To Snapchat his face on top of it is just, it's, it, it's morbid. If you want to do a cheeky reference or a callback, it at least has to feel realistic in the world of the movie. But when you see things like this, you immediately know that they weren't concerned with realism, they were only concerned with the reference. But the worst part about this is that Rook actually says Ash's fucking line from Alien 1. I can't lie to you about your chances, but... You have my sympathies. Technically, he might say that same thing, but you can't bullshit me. I know what you're doing and I don't want to know what you're doing. I want it to feel like a movie, not a talk show with a surprise guest. I want to feel like it's a real world with real people. As soon as you start reciting lines from the original films for no reason, I'm completely taken out of it. But as far as referency lines, the next one takes the cake for me. Andy really does say, Get away from her, you bitch! And my eyes rolled so far back into my fucking skull. And I know the point of it is not to make sense. The point is for us to hoot and holler and choke on our popcorn. But to me, when you're doing things like this, it stops being a movie. It's a charade. It's the filmmakers reaching out of the screen saying, do you get it? And poking us in the eye until we agree to clap. The whole point is that a movie has to follow some kind of set of rules, otherwise we we can't possibly believe it, unless it's a movie like Deadpool and Wolverine. The premise of that movie is that he points out that it's a movie. But like 99% of movies want you to believe what you're seeing. How am I supposed to do that when the characters are quoting lines from the series? Now, references, obviously that word could mean many things, but I'm using that word to mean moments in a movie that break the reality in order to share a gag with you. Deadpool and Wolverine never breaks the reality of the movie because the movie is about the fact that the characters know they're in a movie. Deadpool being self-referential makes complete sense. But the references in Romulus rely solely on coincidence. And just because these coincidences are technically possible doesn't make them believable. This is technically possible. And then they actually brought back the Xenomorph from Alien 1. He really didn't die. And then he survived in like a, a, a meteor? And, and then they extracted his Prometheus goo, but the Prometheus mission failed and everybody died. So why would they know about the Prometheus goo? How did they find out about that? Why, is it just a coincidence that they called it that? And why does the goo baby look like an engineer? Just because the engineers made the goo doesn't mean that it should look like an engineer. And then the goo made the rat heal, but then it turned into a piece of shit. But then Kay didn't turn into a piece of shit. She just had a baby that was a piece of shit. <sighs> what did I think of the characters? I don't know. The, like I said, the main two grew on me. I think Rain is a little too traumatized for trauma's sake. I also think that Rain betraying Andy off camera so early in the movie doesn't make sense with her character. He's obviously the most important person in her life. I think it would have been better if she was more of a morally gray character from the beginning, because not only would her betrayal make more sense, she would have a stronger arc at the end of the movie when she decides to rescue him, which is a nice moment, but I wasn't surprised when she made that decision. All the other characters, it's, it's just, I don't want to blame anyone in particular. Maybe they're not given enough time to rehearse. They're just kind of hollow. They're just 
you know, whispery little dreamers who are very concerned and sweary and yelly all the time. The, the actors don't believe that they are the characters. Something that they teach actors that, I don't know, I don't know if I believe it, is that every moment should be life or death. But that's bullshit. Not every moment in life is life or death. Just watch Alien. Most of the moments in the first half are not life or death. These characters are just being alive. And that's what makes them feel real. They have range. It's not just heavy breathing and conflict at all times for no reason. That's probably why these actors don't believe it. That's not real life. But having said all that, I think the movie has a decent amount to offer. I think the main two leads alone make the movie worth seeing. Going forward, I think another movie with the two of them could be interesting. Do it. I, whatever, I don't know. Let me know what you think of this off-the-cuff style of video. It's certainly faster. I'll continue making the normal videos either way, but if you're into these, I could upload them more often. Thank you as always to my top-tier patrons, Juanita and Look at that Sunrise over there. Thoughts on Alien Romulus? I mean, the first thing I have to bring up. The design choice of being in a space station and still managing to feel claustrophobic was really well done. And also the centerpiece of the face huggers for the first 30 to 40 minutes, I thought was a good choice. I was not the biggest fan of the CGI face on Ian Holm, but I don't mind that that was the model of Android used for scientific studies. And Out of all the scenes in the movie, what was your favorite? It may be a collection of scenes, what were your favorites? Oh, that's a good question. Um... There are really so many, I think. I like the scene where Rain goes back to save Andy. I also enjoyed the moment when she shot the xenomorphs in anti-gravity, though it, technically speaking, a little unrealistic. Did you have any particular thoughts about like the characters in the movie or? It's a really, really good question. Um, I think majority of it um, where you might have like missed something. Andy was my favorite character because the android character always has the most interesting scenes and usually has the best actors. Um, so I...